gem time, folks. Yeah. Um, well, you know, this one is a continuation of a story that's pretty much been one of the bigger uh, economic global stories when it comes to like the global financial system and how it preys on middle income, low income countries. Uh, so very recently, we've covered this a few times, but it's come to a head and Argentina uh, just defaulted on uh, on their debt payments. And this has been a long time uh, fight that's been going on for a few months, basically since this crisis started. So just to recap for folks who aren't familiar with it, Argentina has been hip with the COVID crisis like any other um, society has. They've implemented a very strict uh, social distancing regime that has come with the kind of basic human uh, measures that you would expect to see from a, a humane government, right? Giving people, protecting people's wages, uh, making sure that people have access uh, to health care. And of course, this is completely unacceptable to the international financial community, specifically the bondholders uh, that have uh, a significant interest in Argentinian debt uh, that was primarily picked up under the hor- horrific uh, neoliberal uh, Macri, um, who was president up until uh, very recently when the Fernandez regime uh, took over. So this new government, the maybe not regime. What? I'm just playing. Oh, yeah. I said maybe not regime. I'm playing. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. Whatever. That was a whatever point. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, so so Fernandez's uh, government has been uh, you know trying to renegotiate this significant debt, which is around sixty six billion dollars, uh, which is denoted in foreign currency, which means that they have to pay that in U.S. dollars, and they don't have an unlimited access to that currency. Uh, which means that when they're making these payments, right, not only does it have like a financial toll on the system, it's also making the decision basically between buying medicines or paying off debts, right? Because you can only have, if you only have access to so many U.S. dollars, uh, you have to decide how you're going to pay the, you know, how you're going to pay it. And um, <clears throat> with so many other of the international um, agreements and how you would buy medicine or medical equipment, a lot of people want dollars. Um, so you actually have to make that hard decision um, too. So basically, they've been asking for a three-year grace period, um, a cut on the interest rates, and a small cut to the principal of the debt. And even though the international community, the governments have basically come to the table with Argentina, which holds a significant amount of debt in general, uh, these investors, private investors, are refusing to, primarily BlackRock, uh, which is a really insidious um, firm. Um, that has basically been bolstered over the past 15 to 20 years, but that's a different uh, conversation. So right now they've been trying to renegotiate this debt with very reasonable um, demands, basically saying we're in the middle of an economic crisis and now we're facing COVID. There's no way we can make these debt payments. And in the long-term interest of those bondholders, of those BlackRock um, bondholders, they should want Argentina to take a little break on making those payments because the alternative is so much worse. If Argentina actually is forced into making these payments when they can't, that means that they have to drastically cut services to people, that they won't have the money to basically uh, restart their economy when the coronavirus crisis is over. Any kind of rational person um, can understand the argument uh, for why demanding that these payments to be made um, is ludicrous. But fundamentally, this isn't about Argentina for these folks. It's about making an international example. And this is going to be a story that we're going to see more and more of. Low-income countries and middle-income countries have really been relying on a lot of private um, organizations to, uh, they, they've been relying on debt service, sort of from uh, private organizations rather than intergovernmental organizations or government-to-government organizations. Um, and these organizations really want to make make a strong message that they will let your country burn you will pay them. Um, and, you know, I'll just say like the moral argument here is that these people made an investment. They made a bet on the neoliberal hellscape of McCree, right, which drastically cut services for average people across the board, right? They made an investment thinking, that, oh, this is going to pay out um, in, in the long term. Well, the people revolted against this horrible neoliberal regime and they put in a more humane center left government there. Um, so, you know what? I'm sorry. Those people should eat it. Like if, if you want to be like a hardcore capitalist, right, you make a bad investment, you eat it. But what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to use the United States court system um, to punish Argentina. And because the United States military and economic power is so strong, you know, the United States court systems basically have uh, de facto power to you know, punish governments. Um, so, you know, this uh, this debt is 
unsustainable. What we're seeing right now is significant capital flight uh, from Argentina, which has already been a problem. Somewhere around $300 billion is estimated to be held offshore accounts uh, from the Argentina uh, from the population of Argentina, which is a significant amount of money, especially when we're talking about uh, the, the kind of debts that Argentina owes to the rest of the world. Argentina has been suffering from massive inflation around 50% annually. I mean, like the, 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 the system there is unsustainable in the first place and basically demanding these outrageous debt payments continue is ludicrous. And you know who's come to the table on this as well? The IMF. Last March, the IMF, right, which is like part of the organization that you don't expect to basically come uh, to the defense of uh, indebted nations. Argent, um, the IMF came forward and they said they don't think that Argentina can service debt payments in uh, foreign currency for four years. And when the IMF is being the voice of reason in this situation, uh, it only goes to show just how outrageous these organizations like BlackRock are. So we'll see. Uh, what happens? They've defaulted on this payment, but there are ongoing discussions. There are more bondholders than just BlackRock, and those bondholders are actually saying that they think that the conversations have been constructive and that you know it looks like they're getting closer to a deal. BlackRock, on the other hand, has been saying that they haven't heard anything reasonable coming from the Argentinian uh, government. So June 2nd is now the new deadline uh, for some kind of renegotiation for this uh, for this debt and you know something we need to be watching, uh, not only to show solidarity and support uh, for the Argentinian people, but because COVID has exposed a debt crisis and exposed uh, overextension of debt to countries that basically are, we're never going to be able to make the payments in, in the first place. There needs to be massive debt restructuring and there needs to be an international solution to this problem that, that the basically the major players, the United States, the EU, and all these countries allowed to happen, which was this massive extension of, uh, you know, private debt. Um, so we'll see, you know, and like it's going to happen with Argentina. There's also questions about, for example, like the Chinese debt that has been, you know, uh, developed through Belt and Road. And how are those countries going to be able to pay it back? I mean, there's going to have to be a massive kind of debt restructuring. And the first thing that needs to happen, though, is going to be to bring these private organizations to the table um, and not to allow them to basically hold entire nations hostage. 100%. That's great, David. And I would watch the conversation Grace Blakely and I had on this uh, go in the archive. It relates very well. Yeah. Um, so, and generally, there should be, there's a lot of areas, both domestic and internationally, of debts. We should just have debt jubilee. Yeah. I mean, on so many areas, medical debt. Get that word in the zeitgeist. That actually was part of a big push around, and it was adjacent to the globalization movement around between 1999 and 2001 or so. And it was something to some degree pursued somewhat sincerely in certain ways by particularly Gordon Brown in the UK. There was some actual debt relief and there was a big push for a Jubilee language from groups like Oxfam. And we need yeah. to get that back in and we need to uh, you know, obviously, it's not an act of charity. It's an act of politics and economics, and it should recognize the political arrangements and domination that have led us to those situations. So there are so many areas where simply uh, canceling debts or allowing for radical restructuring will do so much, both for personal finance as well as uh, global finance. And I would just add as a selling point, like the language I think we really need to be using is, is democracy. Uh, too, right? Because it's un, it's unreasonable um, that you know one administration, the McCree government, is basically able to devastate the negotiating power of an entire nation for you know for decades on end, right? right? Um, if the people don't want that government in power anymore, it's absurd to expect. Um, for you know, we're not even saying get rid of all the debts, but it's absurd to expect that those debts at the ridiculously high interest rates that they had in the first place should be upheld. And it's a, fundamentally, it's a basic democratic uh, question: should it, should uh, you know political power reside with the people, or should it reside with the small group of investors at you know incorporated around BlackRock? Absolutely. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.